Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you are watching us from around the world, this is the Inspired Family Leader Program with Samuel A. Bakutana, your host, a certified executive coach, an award-winning leadership consultant, a global speaker and author, the CEO of Inspired Leaders International and your national or provincial Fathers Union president. I am a father. My daughter is Petra. My son is Prosper. And I have many other children around me. The children I meet in different places. I lead a union of fathers, parents, who, together with their wonderful wives, are raising a generation of young people whom we believe are going to grow up to become responsible citizens of the nation, whom we believe are going to be courageous ladies of substance and great men of integrity, whatever they will be. But here is one thing that is likely to either empower them to become those transformational leaders in their generation or to stand in their own way of becoming useful citizens. Media. 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 Television, radio stations, newspapers, the traditional media houses, but also the social media. And all that is consumed on something called a screen. <laughs> Today, on this program, which is episode 91, we are talking about protecting our children in the digital age. Protecting our children in the digital age. And together with me in the studio, to help us make a lot of sense of this important conversation is none other than Mr. Owen Mwesje, the head of programs and marketing at Church of Uganda Family TV, and someone who is an advocate of a kind of media that is safe for our children. It's a pleasure to have you here, my brother Owen. Uh, it's more than a pleasure to be hosted by you. And uh, in an era like mm -hmm. this one, mm -hmm. where uh, we have to think more into what the future has uh, yes. holds mm. for the innocent brains that Indeed. we have in our homes, yeah. as caregivers, as parents, as leaders. And trust me, I'm more pleased Thank you, you. Uh, than... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you could be toast me <laughs> because uh, it, at the end of the day, it's a discussion where yes. it's not about us, it's mm. about tomorrow. Indeed. And uh, when, when, when the UN Convention, the 1989, mm. uh, about the rights of a child, yes. it was about few leaders that came and said, no, the world deserves to be better. Mm -hmm. And they came up with different kind of sets of policies that mm. can shape that. Yes. And now that there is a change in the world, mm -hmm. from what was in uh, uh, 1989 to what is now in 2024, it's a totally different world. So Indeed. there is need for now new leaders, new inspiration, uh, our parents to come up and say, how do we protect our children mm -hmm. in the new age? Awesome. What a pleasure to have you here, indeed. I would like you to look into that camera and say hi to the people who are viewing and introduce yourself. Who is Owen, beyond what I said? <laughs> uh, good evening. Owen is uh, a strong advocate for child self media. And child self media is, uh, in brief, it's content on different uh, screens that favors a child to thrive while being protected from the harm that comes with it. Owen professionally is a cocktail of three things, technology, media, and marketing. And that defines the role that I play in here at uh, Church of Uganda Family TV, but even outside Church of Uganda Family TV. I am a father of two, a Luke and Philpa. And what I'm talking about, what we're advocating for, is more from the inner passion and then brings to the knowledge that you get uh, by being exposed to the technology on a daily basis, working in a media company that advocates for the same, 
and also understanding the danger that lies beyond us. All right. Yeah. Greetings to Luke, greetings to Philippa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wherever you are, Dad is here to show us how we can be able to protect your brothers and sisters. Now, our topic is protecting our children in the digital age. So yeah. I would like us to begin from the beginning. <laughs> Let's begin from the genesis. <laughs> yeah. Let's begin from, you know, point one. When we say the digital age, mm. which age is that? Try to give us a snapshot. Which age is the digital age? Our, the easiest way to bring it is if you get, uh, if you're around 20s, mm -hmm. uh, try to get your phone, give it to your father, and ask them to navigate through. Mm. Or perhaps the time uh, when there was work and everyone was using uh, typewriters uh -huh. and yeah. they brought in computers <laughs> and uh, everyone was forced even at an older age to go mm -hmm. and do a computer oh, yes. course oh, yes. so that you can keep your job and this spans in the early 90s mm -hmm. and that is for developed countries mm -hmm. but when you come to countries like uganda and not until around 2020 2000s mm -hmm. did we see a lot of computer coming through mm -hmm. but uh, along the way Phones came. Yes. And when phones came and tablets, uh, mm. instead of carrying the other big piece of computer, mm. uh, life became much easier and computers <laughs> were put in our pockets. Yeah, there was a time actually where they would say, the computer in Kampala swallowed your name. <laughs> People who are a certain age know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, yes. So, <laughs> to understand it, if I go to Wernyanja and give my father a phone to operate, mm. the pace I would operate this device is different from how he mm -hmm. would operate it. The reason? And the reason is because he was born in a time when technology had not come to be part and mm. parcel of our lives, mm. daily lives. Yes. So bring it, in, bring it pers uh, perspective in terms of grooming. Mm. Uh, before 2010, uh, when social media came in place, social mm. media, we are talking about uh, a community mm. of about 5 billion. A community of about 5 billion people which is online. The, online, which is the largest nation. To bring it perspective, that is 82.5% mm. of world's population. 62.5% 60, of the world's population. 62. So in other words, one, <laughs> when you meet 10 people in the world, yes, al almost 7 of them are online. Are online. And this is a community that has no rules, has mm -hmm. no leader, has no boundaries. No president no of the president online nation. <laughs> of the online nation. Uh, and uh, like just in our normal society, you will mm. find in that community there is a good person. Mm. There is a potential rapist. There is a thief. Mm. There is a con man. There is a good preacher. There mm. is a teacher. All of them online. All of them online. Now, if you are uh, staying in a village, and you found that it was necessary to build a wall yeah, on your yeah. house. A fence. A fence. And uh, besides that, you, you, you come up with other technologies, alarms, mm. Mm. lights. Dogs. So you yourself dogs. <laughs> and this is just for a community around maybe a thousand people. But here you have 5.4 billion. Mm. They can access anyone at any time and masquerade to be anyone at any time. It doesn't mean that there are no good people in this yes. online audience. Yes, they are. But what you're saying is the reasons we protect ourselves physically in our physical communities, there must be a reason why we need to be more worried mm. about this borderless community of 5.4 billion people mm. on this uh, online community. Mm. So it brings us also now to the perspective of parenting. So before technology got to be part and parcel of our lives, we used to have what we call play-based parenting. Okay, so before we get to that, yes, we have now looked at what the digital age actually means, how it looks like yes. a big nation of 5.04 billion people. Sometimes when we say billion, many people don't really get. <laughs> we are talking about going beyond thousands, to tens of thousands. Yes. <laughs> you got hundreds of thousands. You go to millions of people. Then you go to hundreds of millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, then a billion. So 5.04 billion people, yes. that kind of a nation. What 
is going on in my mind is how does this kind of digital age affect mm-hmm. children's lives today? Before we get to the other okay. side of the parenting, okay. how does this digital age affect children's lives? Now, uh, it's two ways, mm. positively and negatively. Yes. Positively, we are looking at uh, uh, this young child with ability, for example, to mm. talk uh, to anyone at any point without mm. restrictions of proximity. Mm. I can talk to someone in US and it enables communication to be easy. Without physical limitations yes. of travel. Yes, and when you look during COVID when restrictions are done, people are able to study yes. online. Mm. So it brings in the ability to study from anywhere mm. and do any course and others have even opted for homeschooling. True. Then also it brings in the bit of where um, this young child, if moderated and use right tools even mm. online there are tools that can bring up mm. uh, better multitaskers mm-hmm. better thinkers so there are also creativity, creativity mm. and comes on board and also the exposure gets mm-hmm. to be a little higher because mm. this child has ability to know what is happening in us yes at the, 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 the within their palms mm. Recently, so, my, my, my daughter was updating me about the wedding of some musician in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you oh were, my. I had to rush to YouTube, get to understand the music of this man, yes. to be sure we are safe in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it brings all those benefits. However, it also comes up with the uh, facts that mm. there is the, the, the sides of uh, all what we'd call effects that mm. come with consumption mm. of unlimited screen time. Mm-hmm. And by unlimited screen time, I'm bringing by research, we're looking at uh, a child between four to six spends about six hours, if unmonitored, on screens. Mm. As you grow to eight at 14, it even gets to, 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 to be more time around eight to nine hours. That is during holidays, if I assume they are not at school. Mm. And they say when it comes to 14 and they've learned gaming and all that, this child is spending about 11 hours. You, when you're at a sleep, day? In a day. You, when you're busy sleeping, for them, they're watching more movies, more series, doing games. And the reason behind that is that these screens were designed to be addictive. Mm. And what will shock everyone is that the, the unregulated screen time uh, triggers uh, the feel-good hormones in our brains. Dopamine? Dopamine. Mm. Now, dopamine has the same effect. Excessive screen consumption has the same effect mm. as cocaine and drugs of abuse. Marijuana. Yes. So if you're worried about alcohol consumption and what would happen, <laughs> if you're worried about uh, cocaine, just for a fact, the same effect a child or even old grown-up brain effect it has on your brain if mm. you, it's not regulated is exactly the same. Research says it pushes over 400 times a mm. spike of 400 of dopamine, which is a feel-good hormone. Mm. And, and, and someone put it in a context and say that what it does is not about liking, it's about wanting. It's that's not about why liking, it's, it's about wanting. wanting. It brings in this bit of, I want this. For example, that's mm. why your child is watching a small cartoon somewhere and you mm. get the phone away from it. Mm-hmm. It's that reaction of, I want this, I yes, can't do badly. without it. it. And along the way, the impact has gone on to find that around 78% of children that have been researched and, 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 and interviewed say they can't live with, uh, without social media. Mm-hmm. They can't live without these screens. The idea that I can't live without it—it mm. it doesn't even just go by that with children only. Of course, even us old ones. Mm, it actually, ask yourself, with us. <laughs> <laughs> ask yourself if you wake up in the morning and you've driven maybe fifty kilometers mm. and you realize you've forgotten your phone. Mm. That the smartphone. Mm. If you have two phones, most of us would actually drive back home. Yeah, but when you forget your Bible, <laughs> that's the addiction that we are talking <laughs> you about. You don't go back. So the effects of media are real. And along the way, there's even come up to the ideas of issues of depression. They say 30% of children that have excessive screen consumption Mm. have been diagnosed with depression. That's sad. Depression. So if you get 10, three of these children Mm. who watch unlimited screen time uncontrolled have had issues of anxiety, issues of depression, and along the way, 
it is going to even be worse. Mm. We are talking about mental health. Everyone now we talk about here, people saying, ah, mental health, mental health. The truth is, mental health starts with how we deal with our daily lives. That's true. And part of the contributors are these screens we don't regulate. Okay. So, putting this into perspective, therefore, yes. in a nutshell, why is it important that we now protect our children from all this? So, if you look in countries like China, Taiwan, Korea, these nations have gone ahead to put what we call detox centers. Detox centers. It's like the tabika mm -hmm. of social media addicts mm -hmm. or gaming addicts. Mm -hmm. And do you know how much a parent pays? Mm -hmm. $400 per day. $400 per day for yeah. a child to be in a <laughs> detox center because of excessive, excessive screen. screen time. Yes. So if all this is not regulated, a lot more is happening. I'll also give you another worry. Recently, Metadata, Meta is the company that owns Facebook and Instagram. Yes. It released data that shows on a daily basis mm. 100,000 cases of sexual exploitation and harassment happen on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. 100,000 daily. At the same time, you find data by UNICEF says that 80% uh, of children that watch between 8 and 14, that watch these screens, mm. including the TVs we have in our homes, not only the phones, mm. have been exposed to pornography. Mm -hmm. 12,000 scenes of violence, including rape, murder, are exposed to a child annually. Mm. And when you look at this, someone says we are in Uganda. Mm. Like I said, the 5.04 billion is a borderless nation. And still, by facts, is that the consumption of this content that we have in Uganda, in the context of Uganda, is still more of foreign. And you know, I've just calculated here as you are talking, when uh, you say 12,000 scenes of uh, uh, pornography, pornography a year, and that violence. means about 33 exposures every day to pornography across the year. That is massive damage. If you want to understand it, it simply means that a child along the way gets to find that sex is a normal thing. Mm. Who doesn't do it? Nudity is a normal thing. Videos that play in our TVs, in our living rooms as early as 8 a.m. or midday. There are literally semi nude videos, mm. music videos, and now we call it soft porn. If you if you look deeper, you'll find that things that used to make us have a shoni, that even mentioning it, that's feeling, why... Feeling for ashamed. E for example, that's why sex education was a little hard because yes. you'd want to mention some things, but you're looking <laughs> at... But now, these kids are seeing more things than you see as an old person. Than I saw basis. the whole of my childhood. So, uh, along the way, you'll find that things that used to be special, sacred, like sex, Private conversations. Private conversations. Now, these children interact with them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. The games that they are playing, defensive driving, mm. before even the on kid the gets phone, on, on the, the phone, tab. on the tab, or even playstations in our homes, most of us don't even know what these things are. Yeah. You simply know I'm in love with this game. The whole thing is that if we don't raise up, if you look at the new statistics from Uganda AIDS Commission, they tell you that the new surge in AIDS infections is mm. in young girls. Mm -hmm. If we go deeper, and I would love AIDS Commission could look into this, mm. what are the media habits of these young girls? Mm -hmm. You'll find that these are people that actually live and have consumed what we're talking about. They expose pornography and they've lived to know that it's a normal thing. So they have been successfully desensitized to sexual activity? Yes. So it becomes hard when a child grows looking at these things, violent scenes, sex, tapes, nudes, and all that, and you want to come and control them later in life. Yeah, yeah. 
That's why in our language we have a T O K I N K A K A C H I R K A T O. You bend a, a stick or a tree when it is still young. Otherwise, when it is already old and brittle, and yes. it will break. Yes. And check to the yes what is happening. Gun violence. A kid wakes up, picks up a gun, walks into a school, shoots fellow kids. Mm. It's on the rise, and partly of what research says because these kids have spent most of their times on these games, shooting on the on, on each other. Yeah, on the PlayStation shooting. Yes, and as a game, but now they transfer it into real life. In real life, and the shocking bit that might, most parents might, must not know is that these games are usually playing with other people, mm-hmm. which they don't know about. Mm-hmm. You might find them in Uganda. I'm in Kampala, mm. and my player partner on this online game is in US or mm. is in Russia or anywhere, mm. and then brings in the idea of grooming. <clears throat> so the conversations I have with this person I play with on a daily basis, four hours, mm. who is a stranger, mm. and the parent is not worried because I know my father used to tell me, you need to know whom you're talking to. If someone, for example, is not well mannered and well groomed mm. will teach you like what they say mm. something like that you yeah. can't <laughs> bad company bad company basically it corrupts good character good character and the same principles happen in this digital age you see and what should worry me and you as a parent as a leader as an educator is that we don't have control over it and that's and that's worrying that's worrying and somehow it brings in some sort of a sense of hopelessness for most parents because they would like to protect their children they are trying to raise them well yeah. but when they look at the environment in which these children are growing up yeah. this digital age that we are talking about mm. and what the children are exposed to and then you add to that the fact that we have little control like you have just said mm. It brings in a sense, a sense of hopelessness. And that's why I would like to ask, whose role, in your view, is it to ensure that our children are actually thriving in the digital age while they are being protected from digital harm? Um, I'll bring it this way. They say uh, charity begins at home. That's why I married her. My wife is charity. <laughs> because charity <laughs> begins at home. <laughs> so, charity begins at home. And in this way, why I say charity begins at home, much as every stakeholder has a mm. role. Mm. But I believe if the family unit mm-hmm. has gotten the concept of proper grooming yes. right out of this family unit, there is a better leader who mm-hmm. is going to be a regulator, mm-hmm. maybe working at GCC. There will be a better MP who is going to be a policy maker mm. and uh, is going to look for policy that will help safeguard our children. Mm. There will be a better educator mm. who spend almost three quarters of the year with our children in school. A coder. To, yes, and make sure that they are groomed well. And most of them will be that parent who is the first gatekeeper to grooming. This we can't push this to his first responsibility. Yes. Divine responsibility. That father. That father, that, that mother. mother. Now also, there will be this other child. And so I bring it back, the family unit, that caregiver, that brother, that mm. sister, that cousin, must take in as their mandate to make sure that they protect these children. Mm. They protect these young souls. Because a young mind, a child's mind is like a sponge. Yeah. When you get a sponge and dip it into water, it will absorb all the water. Mm. If you dip it into oil, it will absorb oil. Yeah. If you dip it into anything, into, as long milk. As into milk, it will absorb milk. So these are young brains trying to, to figure out life. So what they're exposed most to at this age is what they grow to absorb and it will be their reflection. So to me, mm. the family comes first. Mm. And the parent is your mandate, your responsibility to be vast with this. I know the worry we're saying the hopelessness is, mm. is that because at times I pity mm. this parent because has been groomed and yes. raised in a different era. Oh yes. Oh, so yes. this whole digital world is even when you tell him what's up, can you chat? Can we chat on WhatsApp? <laughs> it's, uh, yes, it, yeah. it's rocket science. It's rocket science, mm. even on basic applications. Mm. And no wonder the other day at the launch, uh, Honorable Matembe said uh, that I'm not on TikTok, mm. but <laughs> M- meaning TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. I heard about that. You, you know, like that's how hard it is. Even knowing these things become hard. Mm. So they, they 
are in a place of being digitally illiterate. Digital illiterate. Illiterate. So they don't know how to navigate this age. This and now era. those are the very people, Owen, that, that you're saying that you should protect now digitally. So True. how will they give what they don't have? I will give you an example. When a young woman gets married and is going to give birth, yes. it's a whole new experience. Mm -hmm. But the mother nature in them makes them look for things that will ensure that their child survives. Mm. Now, when there are some things, obviously, the role that the mother or mm. the grandparent of this child will play in teaching yes. this young mother, but there are those natural instincts that come up to be vast. Mm. For example, you will look, you'll find a mother digging mm. to know how do I make sure that I bathe this kid and mm. how do I make sure that I feed this kid. Even when the mother or, or the grandmother for this kid is not there to help, but there is always that urge, mm. that inner drive for yes. you to protect mm. this child. Mm. It's and natural. It's natural. And now what we need to adjust to is find one, accept that we are in a new era. Mm -hmm. And the moment we accept it and we are versed with how this era is like, then we make the forward steps of saying, how do I make sure that I, Samuel Wakutana, mm. am versed with what Dikto mm. world has? Yes. Because if so we... So making an attempt an to attempt. educate myself as a parent yes. about the new digital realities. Yes. And if that can't happen, then how is it possible? How, how do we make the efforts that the Owens... Uh, another person out there who is an advocate for such experiences, mm. we reach out to these parents wherever they are, mm. in their small groups, and equip them with the right knowledge. Okay. Because to me, that is very, very important. So, number one, it's the role of the parent. Yes. Who else? Number two, uh, I want to, 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 before you jump to that who else, mm. you see, there is a parent and a child. Yes. And I want to give this submission that most of the things we are taught as children were more in instilling those good values. Mm -hmm. So the child themselves have a very big role to play. Mm -hmm. Because once a child is empowered with all this, mm -hmm. then your child becomes a better advocate at school, mm -hmm. becomes a better advocate in the areas of influence. And, and fellow children believe in him or her more than... More than even they do. Yes. So at a very level, how do we make sure that we empower these children of ours to be better citizens wherever they are? Mm. Because what happens is that when Owen goes and empowers Luke at home to be a responsible digital citizen, there are some things that Luke won't share yes. at a later age. Mm -hmm. Even if they land on it, mm. won't call the neighbors to come and watch a pornography mm -hmm. movie won't do that because literally has been groomed to know I must be a better digital citizen. So children themselves have a role to play and the guess is that it's a parent or an educator mm. that empowers this child. Because mm -hmm. this now brings me who next. When you say educator, do you mean the teacher in a formal institution? Our educators are let me bring it to formal institution, okay. just not avoid uh, mm. uh, 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 responsibility confusion. Yeah, because the parent is also an yes. educator. So Now, in schools or institutions where our children go every day for almost three quarters of mm. the year, mm. now these parents, you'll find that the new curriculum integrates ICT as a core. Yes. Even the teacher themselves, they're required to even submit these things digitally. To the That's ministries. true. Log in, log out. And they live with the technology as part, uh, the, the world where they call it edutech. Mm. Edutech is education through use of technology. Mm. Now, if we are moving that direction, then the teacher must know what lies beyond these screens. Mm. And what would be safe? What are the dangers? What are the opportunities? And the problem is that we focus so more on the opportunities, which we already know, because yes. that's why we buy these gadgets. Mm. But also we need to equip how safe are they. So a teacher or a director of a school must come up to know that how do I safeguard these little ones yes. in this age. Now, that takes a proactive role mm. to find out that themselves must be equipped. The teachers? Yes. Because if they don't have these skills, which are digital skills, there is no way 
that they are going to make sure that they put it as part and parcel of their curriculum. Mm. Some nations like UK have gone ahead to do that, like <coughs> England. Well, they, they, they've made sure that uh, child protection is part of the education curriculum. Yeah. Their policies, every school is encouraged to make sure that they come up with policies on how to deal with media and digital and technology. And it really makes sense because if yes. I am a teacher who is going to be educating these children, mm. I need to be able to know how to protect them as part of my educational role. Yes. Not to only give them information that yes. helps them to calculate, to reason and so on and so forth, but also for their safety, security and protection. Yeah, and you see there is a proper distinction from not every risk mm. uh, results into harm. Mm. Now, the problem with most of us, we wait for the harm. Yeah. But uh, before harm happens, there is a risk that should be mitigated. Mm -hmm. Now, from a parent's side, an educator's side, you must understand what are these risks. Mm. And acknowledge and appreciate that these risks exist. Don't give it a side idea like, ah, let's focus on this. No. Let's focus. They, they always say, be positive. Be positive. Let's focus on the good things, the good side of technology. <laughs> <laughs> but you see... Th that is a dangerous optimism. Let me tell you the shocking bit. UCC did a research in mm. 2020. That's Uganda Communications Commission. Yes. And during this research, they found out that 7 out of 10 children that use mm. these screens, let it be phones, let it be uh, TVs or tablets, they never share their experiences with their parents. Yeah. They never talk to it to anyone. On the contrary, they go back to the strangers they have on social networks, mm. the five billion. Yes. They go post their experiences and see their reactions. And on the other side, there is the other one who is naturally a bully. Mm. Now, a kid will innocently say, uh, for example, had issues of sexual uh, extortion, for example, sextortion, or have been bullied in a way or puts up a picture, and there is those who will give right compliments, there are those who will give brutal compliments. Oh, yeah. And this young boy or young girl can't understand it mm. because the reason they went there was for social approval. Yes. Now the for, legs for good compliments, good compliments, for approval, yes. you know. And some of them have grown to ages of eight and they've never had their mothers or fathers saying, you're looking beautiful. That's true. Oh, and my now, son, you're strong. <laughs> this morning I found my, my yeah. son, my son is eight and a half years. Yeah. This morning I saw, uh, today is Saturday. Yeah. So this week I bought for, for him a recorder, music mm -hmm. instrument. Mm -hmm. So this morning I saw on the cover of the music instrument, mm. he had written there his name, uh, uh, Ahereza Prosper Bakutana Hard Guy. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> this is <laughs> a hard guy. Yeah? Wow. So Prosper. I, I just made a joke around mm. it. I, I, take, I always take that mm. approach when I see something. Even if it's a little bit shocking or what, I want to take it slow and uh, calm. Mm. said, e, what, what is this my hard guy? What, what's this about? Said, then I looked in front of hard guy. There was a picture he drew there, mm. a, a photo of somebody like this. <laughs> so I had to engage him about it and he said, and, yeah, I'm strong. I said, okay. And you see what you did mm. created a safe zone for him. Mm -hmm. And that self zone is communication. Mm. That later on, if he gets an issue, it wouldn't mm. be hard to communicate to you about it. Mm -hmm. Even if he found, for example, a stranger online is trying to do something, an experience which is bad, mm. would find comfort in talking to you because you've <laughs> been taken interest in what they do. I've become now, a fellow hard guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you find that, for example, if, if also the other side was that most of these children uh, watch 8 out of 10 watch mm. or use these phones in their own bedrooms yes meaning as parents we've given liberty for these people to just go do whatever by the way w w when is the right time to give a child a phone or a tab <laughs> that's a question that we've struggled with you see and you don't get a, a to me a it's, good answer to me it's about the reason why you need this tabs. Mm. We go back to the basics. If your purpose for buying phones for these children or these for your kids is for example to communicate. I'm giving an example. There is a safer way. Mm. We have what we call flip phones or button phones. This button phone has no much of internet use. Yeah. 
their role is pick up, call mom, hey mom, we are done with school, come and pick me. Mm. Now, you find that someone whose desire is to communicate at that basic level with a child, mm. buys an iPhone or a smartphone, loads the data daily <laughs> so that they can use WhatsApp and chat with them or video calls and forgets that beyond the video calls, there is a whole bucket yeah. of risks. Okay. So to so me, it's about the to me, the it's about why. It. If, for example, it's about research, don't we have time to do research at home? Mm -hmm. At least of today, when we were in a, a glad you were there, we were talking to parents of Shoma Christian Academy mm. earlier today in the morning, and one of the parents said that for him, the daughter only accesses the phone at seven p.m. Yes. Before 7 p.m., cannot get the tab to do anything that is doing analysis research and has to do it in time. Mm. So there must be rules and guidelines that we set. Okay. Just like we grew up without these phones, but you'd know, you will wake up, uh, my mom would put a rotor mm. and says, Owen, for you today, you're going to wash your utensils. Mm. Rona, you're going to make sure that breakfast is ready by this time. Mm. Rogers, who was the elder one, make sure that the cows in the zero grazing are fed on time. This was our rotors, yeah. and our days were programmed. Mm. Also, in this new era, we need to continue with the same principle, but make sure that we put a mix of the physical mm. works and the screen time. Okay, so so far concerning the roles mm. of, a, of ensuring children thrive in the digital age mm. while protecting them mm. against digital harm, mm. we have the home where we have the parents. Then secondly, we've talked about the children being empowered to be yes. better advocates. Yeah. And number three, we've talked about the teachers in the school environment who are supposed to ensure safe edutech. Yes, yes. Any other... Where is the government on this? Uh, As well. uh, and where are the media houses? I thought you yes, would... Yes, uh, I'm, I'm coming to that. Yes. You see, for government, it's about policies. Exactly. Now, you find in Uganda we don't have any dedicated policy mm -hmm. to child online protection or digital protection. Mm. The few policies that are in there are found in Computer Misuse Act, mm. uh, dropped in there, you find in uh, anti-pornography, uh, things like that. Yes. And, but there's no dedicated um, policy that is crafted with aim at children in this digital age. Mm. Now, what that means is that if tomorrow <coughs> an online crime is committed, mm. you find that the enforcers have limited power because there is there no, no policy, policy framework. framework to bring them to that. And that's why the government needs to come into that. For example, also in the regulator side, you have mm. ECC. Mm. For media companies, we are given rules on how we operate. Mm -hmm. For example, you, you, you're supposed to have content rating. Mm. For example, most of you watch movies, you'll find PG-14, PG. uh, there is a PG, uh, maybe 8 or So 18. is PG Patrick Gumisiriza? <laughs> For people who don't know what that is about, whenever a parent sees PG, what should that mean to him or her? Parental guidance. PG means parental guidance. guidance. Uh, yeah. So In other words, a child should not watch that without a parent to be guiding. Yeah. And suppose and that parent is a misguided parent. Yeah, we've seen it. I've... We've had scenarios, and I'm sure a parent out there, you need to punch into your heart and mm. tell yourself, uh, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. <laughs> With, you, you watch a movie, and it has PG-14 mm. or PG-18, and you go ahead and watch it with a four-year-old mm. because you don't want them, maybe you want them to sleep or... You, you're comfortably well, watching. You think they are too little to And be they go affected. ahead when they put in there, they put strong language, they mm. put V for violence, they put S for sex and things like that, mm. or nudity. Mm. This put there, clear in your face, but you go ahead and still be an ambassador of this. And then you expect positive outcomes out of this tomorrow. So government dedicated policy to Policies online child children. protection. Then when you come to regulators, enforce. When TVs, for example, play... The other day, I was glad UCC sent out a letter mm. to all media companies to ensure that they don't play these semi-nude videos during their time. Mm. When children can get exposed to them. There is also a media center that does content rating. Before you air it, you're supposed to take this movie and they rate it and things like that. So 
they are doing their role, but without a policy framework mm. to push these regulators, they keep on the side. Now, there is us content creators. Yes. Uh, now everyone with coming of TikTok and YouTube, everyone is a content creator. Yeah. Uh, music we're talking about, films that we're talking about. How about we have more people coming in to make sure that the safety of these kids mm. are put up? And so they create content that actually inspires and helps the children to get better than to kill them and yes, destroy their Yes, but even future. then, there's one who said that uh, <laughs> clean content doesn't feed them. Yeah, I hear that uh, good news doesn't sell. Because if, you, if, if, if you're in the content or creative economy, they are doing it for you who can able to buy and mm. consume. But where does that put the consciousness of saying that if, for example, I'm an artist and I know what I do every day mm. is live this lifestyle that does not portray a good picture to children, mm. why should I go ahead, for example, to go and perform in a school mm. community and still go well dressed like a dress in my music videos? Now, these children pick them as their public figures, role, their models. role models, put it in that way. And you'll be shocked to find that even now schools have bent back to find that you go for a speech day and the songs they are playing are the same people mm. that these kids watch every day, yeah. naked, almost naked, on the screens dancing. Mm. And you look at it and you're like, where is that generation of where we can have more content that can be mindful of the children? And I know it's a compromise. The other one <coughs> says, me, I'm here to make money. Mm. And that's why one of them openly said, parents, it's your role. Yeah. It's not my role. Me, my role is to make sure I do what I do to make sure I keep relevant in the industry. But it's not my role as, as a content creator, and she boldly said it. Mm. So you go do your role. If you fail that parenting, don't blame it on me who puts on hmm. uh, handkerchiefs as, 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 cuts. <laughs> as cuts. So there is that battle of people wanting to survive in this gig, digital, creative economy mm. and all that. But also, you how technology works, it's like garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. The more if we have more content creators that create content that puts a child mind in perspective mm. and you have more of those, then what floods the internet will be more of that mm. than less of the other. Okay. So we need more of advocates uh, like <coughs> I, I know a friend Pablo who does only kids related mm. and does that, has that failed him to be a better person? I no. don't think so. He has gone ahead to thrive as who he is. Yeah. And, and he's making it even better than those who go to the other side. That's so true. Yeah. So really, I see this is a multifaceted approach. We need a concerted effort. Without Because doubt. you are talking of parents, children, teachers, government, media houses, regulators, content creators, all these. We need a concerted effort to protect yeah. the child in order to have a responsible citizen tomorrow. And here at Family Television, mm. where you are, you have come up with a campaign in line with what we are talking about. Yeah. Just briefly, could you tell us about that campaign, briefly? Yeah, so in light of all this we've talked about, we sat down and said, how do we make sure that we champion this agenda to make sure that a child mm. can continue to thrive? with all this technology that is around, yes. but also be protected from digital harm. And it's called Safe Screens, Safe Kids. Safe Screens, Safe, safe kids. kids. Yeah. And the idea is that when we empowered every stakeholder that may, as mentioned, then we have the capacity to create better digital citizens. Mm. And these better digital citizens will be exactly how we say that it takes a society to groom a child. We used to say it takes a village to raise a child. Actually, it takes until a we all moved to the city. So now, there was no more village. Now, actually, <laughs> on the contrary, the village is the five 
the, the 5.4 billion, billion online now that's a village it's, it's from the physical context now we have mm. an online community of all these people mm. who have different cultures foreign and wherever so, so you've come up with a safe so, screen yeah. safe kids program so this program we aim to make sure that we look at all these stakeholders mm. how do we empower children by visiting these schools mm -hmm. to make sure that we talk to these little ones and come up with right tools and information that they need to be better citizens mm. little citizens but also while they are talk to educators and also the ministries in line how do we come with policies that put the lines and are embedded into the education system mm -hmm. for example can digital literacy be made a comparisonly uh, mm -hmm. part of the curriculum in the lower secondary and also primary schools mm -hmm. so things like that will bring in the all these different stakeholders and empower them but also do awareness mm -hmm. and the awareness we are in this community engagement is doing awareness you're looking at the schools you're looking at also faith uh, uh places of worship mm -hmm. and in here we are not only looking at church of uganda mm -hmm. uh, place of worship the 39 dioceses no we are looking at actually going even to most because the screen doesn't really care about of whether course. muslim or yeah. christian or not even a believer mm -hmm. the child will be impacted the same way so we're saying we shall do these visits where we can find parents gathered in the same place and make an awareness effort to mm -hmm. that and also look at these policy makers and say our uh, what is in stock? I'm sure some MPs don't even know some of these facts. Yes, but they are made to make laws and regulations to support this child to mm. grow in a better digital world, and also empower them town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. But also, we look at what we call coming up with tools. Is what we call the self screen, self kids guide. Mm. Now one will be for children, for parents and also for educators, those three key stakeholders. And through partnership with like-minded organizations, we plan to make sure you come up with tools that are in right, simple language mm -hmm. that can a child, a parent anywhere, can say, if I got a self-screen, a uh, self-kids guide for parenting, mm -hmm. I will find at least 95% of solutions I need to do okay. in one stop place and mm. it will be printed and online. If a child wants to try, for example, UCC is giving a hundred, some hundred, like it's uh, thousands of computers to different schools. Mm. Make sure that at least on every computer given to every school, we put an application mm. of Scape Screen Safe Kids mm -hmm. for children that when a child needs to worry, can get that. So there is a lot of tools we are doing and we believe in the span of five years we can reach 10 million, not actually reaching, but empowering 10 million Ugandans in the other categories of children, parents, and educators. Mm. And once we've empowered them, we know that, yes, Uganda is ready for a better digital age. As Thank you very much. Citizens. It's, it's really a pleasure to know that a media house yeah. is thinking about truly protecting children. Yeah. Because when you look around and you see our television stations, yeah. you see the music they play, you see the kind of programs they have, the way presenters dress, you really see that this media house is all out to destroy the family. To yeah. destroy the family. So I personally would like to commend you as Family TV for taking on that strong stance to ensure that our children are protected. And I'm speaking this time not as the, you know, the, the host of this program. Yeah. I'm right now speaking as the provincial president of the Fathers' Union in Uganda. Yeah. We would like to thank you, Family TV, for taking on this important burden. Let me call it a burden, yeah. you know, a passion of ensuring that you are enriching the lives of the young people with positive content, with healthy content, with yeah. inspiring content, with safe content. Because at the end of the day, if we don't do that, if nobody comes up to do that, we are going to have a totally, you know, brainwashed generation that has been brainwashed with the negative content. Sure. And if we are looking at raising uh, strong families, raising safe communities, raising you know, transformed nations. There is no way how we can do that without protecting our children this way. So really, really, from my heart of hearts and on behalf of the people I lead, thank you, Family TV, for taking on that important role. Appreciate and I see we just have about uh, seven or so minutes to the end of this program. Yeah. I would like you to tell us now, going forward, in a way of sieving out 
key quick tips in mm. a, a way of like a bullet form mm. what are some of the practical strategies that now the parents should go and use in order to safeguard their children's online activities and digital well-being just those quick no. tips of for, the strategies we should use as parents. For starters, a parent out there, empower yourself mm -hmm. with knowledge and uh, about what is happening in the digital world mm. and how it impacts these children. Mm. Secondly, make sure that you have rules in your mm -hmm. home as yes. far as the digital usage is concerned. Put digital order in the home. Right, put put digital order. Have rules what what age should your kid be on social media? Mm. At what time should they use different screens? Thirdly, be involved in their digital lives. Mm -hmm. If you know that your child, for example, is always on these games, take a time, play these games with them, so that along mm. the way you create a digital bonding mm. that they will actually tell you what they experience. If you don't know how to use them, I'll give you a trick. Ask your child to teach you how to play that game. Mm -hmm. And along the way, you'll be vast with first-hand information on what they see mm. and interact with. And what they know. Yes, and also, uh, there are some applications like there's uh, uh, Apple has Apple screen time when you go to every phone he has most new phones mm. are updated with tools that are, have bits of parental guidance mm. and uh, there's a Google family link and every Android phone perhaps has that it can give you chance to track and see what your child is using with these phones but more so take the first step to create a safe digital space in your home we don't need screens in kids' beds. Mm. These children don't need to take these phones in their beds. Mm -hmm. If you choose, say, that I can, for you to use my phone, for you to use this computer, for you to use this tab, you must be in an open space and call it your digital uh, uh, safe space. Now, in that way, you'll be making sure that at least kids know that someone is monitoring. Mm. Then also, uh, lastly, is that uh, be your neighbor's keeper. Because you are living in condominium properties where a thousand kids, you do it in your home, and along the way, you go to the neighbor's place, and it's different. Mm. So you find kids are watching from all different plots. So yes. I would encourage parents, wherever you are, in every group you're in, take the proactive run, be a self screen, self kids ambassador. Teach a fellow parent on how to be better parent in this digital age. Mm. If you can't, these campaigns are going around. And I will make a plea mm. to you as a fa Father's Union leader mm. for the province. Mm. Open up those spaces. Let's come. Invite mm. us to talk to these parents and empower them. Mm -hmm. If you're in Rotary, call us. We'll come and make sure that we teach them mm. to be better. If these schools and they have uh, speech days and they have parents and kids around, yeah. call us. We'll be there. And if there is anyone out there with the urgent passion to also be part of this reach out to us and we see how to collectively empower everyone. Mm. So that said, we can win the battle. That's a very positive and powerful yes. statement. We can actually win the, win battle. the battle. So if the parents are able to do this yeah. and everybody else plays their role, we can win this battle. Sure. In fact, in these times of digital transformation, I would like you in a minute to also say something about what uh, schools can do to keep our children safe amidst online learning because now that has come uh, they are learning online so we've talked a lot about that in this mm -hmm. on this program but i would like you to give them some quick bullet points of what schools should specifically do amidst online learning yeah. to keep the students safe uh, for schools and educators out there for setters come up with policies mm. policies guide you to know how do you deal with digital space mm. within your school and if you find that you have limited resources, you can ask consultants. Yes. And in that way, you'll find that it has set rules. For example, if a child, do you allow phones in schools? Mm -hmm. If it's a policy put, you, you don't allow phones or you allow, yes. if you allow them, how do you ensure that they are protected? Do you have safe spaces where these kids can access the phones? So we need that policy at a school level. Like every school say, this is how we handle the digital child in our school. <laughs> Secondly, mm. there are some practical tools at IT level mm. that you can put within your school labs to find that, for example, safe searches. Mm. You know that uh, certain sites cannot be searched by children. And mm. also increase the monitoring capacity of, of your schools uh, so that at least you're in the know of what these kids do while interacting uh, with the technology. Uh, thirdly, make sure that, that digital literacy 
is part and parcel of everything. I know an SSC teacher out there says that I don't need that, but <laughs> you're sending this child to go and research about volcanoes and whatever. Mm. Along the way, after seeing a pop-up comes and does a new thing. So it you, a sexual volcano. A volcano, sexual volcano. So it's you to know that whether you're teaching not IT, it's part and parcel to make sure you're equipped with this knowledge. Okay. Then lastly, together let's push uh, the government to incorporate an IT policy within the education system. Mm -hmm. It's not yet there. I know UNESCO has tried to push, but we need it. You're in an edu tech era, and yes. without a supporting policy at a higher level, it becomes hard. It becomes hard. Us. I hear you. Yeah. So there is something called the digital footprint. I hear it all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> in less than yeah. a minute, what must our viewers know about digital footprint going forward? Going forward is accept the fact that here we are. Mm. And if we don't accept, we'll keep lying. Secondly, accept that it takes you and me yeah. to be well versed with these things mm. to make sure that we can go around them. Mm. Then lastly, technology, we are supposed to own these gadgets, <laughs> not them to own us. That's important. And I needed to finish with that. If you find that your child is owning you, with these gadgets, then a little bit of grooming is needed. Yeah. So let's not be owned by these technologies. Let's own them into proper use and be better digital citizens going forward. Be better digital citizens going forward. We should own the gadgets, but the gadgets should not own us. These children that we have in our homes, they are the embodiment and the cradle and the crucible of our legacy as individuals, as individual parents, fathers and mothers, but also as families, not only that, but also as a nation, as communities. The strength of any nation is not all about how many strong buildings they have, skyscrapers that are tall all over their cities. The strength of a nation, let me tell you, is not even about how strong their army is, however important that really is. The strength of a nation is not about the, the robustness of their economy. The strength of a nation is not about how beautiful they are, you know, gifted by nature. The strength of a nation is cardinally based on the strength of the character of its citizens. And that character can only be shaped beginning at a young age. But now our children and their character are being shaped by the housemaid when the mom is away working, shaped by the phone when the dad is busy doing something else, shaped by the TV whose control room we have no control over. Shall we protect our children so that we have a strong and enduring family legacy that will be a big contributor to the strength of our nations? Each one of us has a role to play, like our guest today, Mr. Owen Mwesje, has explained. Beginning with you, my fellow father, can we be available to do the work we are supposed to do in protecting our children in our homes? We've talked of the parents, we've talked of the children, you, my wonderful, uh, great children who are watching this program, because I know you do, I've met some of you. One of you amazed me in Gayaza Maule, when I went there and I met you, a young man of 12 years, and a young man came running and said, I know you. I said, who am I? And he said, my name is exactly the way he said them here. He said, you are Samuel A. Bakutana. He even put A. I said, how do you know me? He said, dad and I, we watch you every Saturday. And he said, dad is the one who is in the church playing the keyboard. So you, children also, you who are watching, it's your role to protect yourself and protect your future by not messing up online. Teachers, you are in partnership with us as parents. Do the best that you can. 
policy makers, parliament, government of Uganda, regulators, Uganda Communications Commission, and other regulatory bodies around the world, depending on where you are watching from. Let us not sleep on the job. We are losing generations. Let us not sleep on the job. Religious leaders, educate yourself. You have, you have people every week that you speak to. When was the last time you challenged them about how they use their phones? All of us have a role to play to ensure that we have safe screens and safe kids.